So, how do you feel about Junior going off to college and being able to pack heat when he's there? What's wrong with a few guns on campus? To join me from the Mountain States Legal Foundation, Jim Manley, thank you for being with us. It's a pleasure. Congratulations. This was a huge victory you had at the Colorado Supreme Court. Unanimous decision? Unanimous that kids get to carry guns on campus? A little bit surprised that it was unanimous, but... Uh not surprised that we won. The law was pretty clear. The legislature made the decision in 2003. I know the Colorado Supreme Court. They don't care what the law says. They make the law. Well, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know about that. But in this case, in this case, they actually read the law. They read the law and they applied it. All right. I say, what, let's go backward in time. Let's let's go back there and bring it up up to date. Colorado is one of now nearly all the states. Um, uh, we were one of 30 some when it passed that has a concealed weapons permit system that's done on the state level. It is a what's known as a shall issue. It means that if you if you uh, have these requirements met, the government shall give you uh, a concealed weapon. When did that pass? A we weapons permit. Uh, the the legislation passed in 2003. So since then, it, we've been a shall issue state. If you pass a 10-point fingerprint background check, if your local sheriff doesn't have any real objections to you having a permit, uh, if you go through training, um, then you're entitled to, to get a permit. And you're allowed to have it. Now, you have to be 21, not 18. Is that correct? Right. To, to get a full permit, you have to be 21 years old. Uh, we're not talking about frat boys who are having their first taste of freedom. These are adults that we're talking about that are going to be carried on campus. All right. So, right off the bat, the question was, are there any carve-outs? Are there places where you can't carry your gun if, if, you, if you want to? So, if you're carrying your gun concealed, you can go to any, any place and you can go to restaurants and stores as long as they don't have a sign that says, no, no weapons allowed. What about government facilities? Right. So, for government facilities, uh, places where federal law doesn't allow you to carry uh, are, are out. So, post offices, um, those are probably the biggest example. Uh, national parks, just in, until recently. Uh, and then public buildings that have metal detectors. So places like the Capitol or courthouses, where everyone that walks in is screened, and then security checks your gun at the door. What about grade schools? And then also K through 12 schools. You can't carry inside a K through 12 school, but you can store your gun in the car while you're there. OK, so a teacher goes to work. She can lock her gun in the car. Uh, but you can't bring it in. What about college campuses? From 2003's point of view, was there an explicit carve-out saying, yeah, can't carry on the University of Colorado campus? Well, it's interesting. The university wanted that. They lobbied hard to get themselves, to get the, the universities included in the list of places where you can't carry. The legislature debated it. The House defeated an amendment that would have added universities to the list. And so, You'd think that then in 2003 the issue would be settled. But. All right, so let, let me just repeat this back because I want to make sure I've got this one. So back in 2003, the colleges said, wait a second, we want a carve out. We don't want guns on our campuses, period. Treat us like you do the grade schools and uh, public buildings with medical, metal detectors. We want to be like that. And the legislature said, no. And so isn't that pretty clear then that they meant the legislature, that you could carry on college campuses, and college campuses are an outgrowth of, of the state. So what did the colleges do? Well, the colleges went to the uh, attorney general, Ken Salazar, and asked him to give an opinion about whether universities were covered by this act. Uh, why they needed to ask the attorney general that when they've already been told by the legislature, to their face, you're covered, I don't know. but. The attorney general obliged, and he said, you're not covered, that the universities are actually exempt, even though the legislature said that they were included. Under what thinking? Well, there were uh, a couple of Supreme Court cases that said that in order to include the regents in legislation, they have to be included by name, explicitly. The problem with that was that there was also a more recent Supreme Court case that said they don't have to be included explicitly. So. If the legislature passes statewide comprehensive legislation that covers everybody, that creates one statewide rule, then the university is included, whether they're named in the statute or not. And um, 
the attorney general just well, I, I attorney, guess missed that point. No, or, or, I think, or I, think I think it. the I think the attorney general was playing to his political base, not much else. And so he put out he put out this this opinion, and that's all it is is an opinion. It's not a ruling. And with that, CU, CSU, and who else passed bans on the college campus? Well, actually, CSU was the exception. That oh. would be the easier way to say it. Everyone else has had a, had a ban in place. So for the last 10 years, CSU up in Fort Collins have has allowed, legally, people to carry concealed weapons if they if they have a permit. Yeah, and down at the, at the Pueblo campus as well. And they have been shooting fields of violence ever since. We now have nearly a decade, and we know of all the gun-related crime and violence that have happened on, on those college campuses, Those that exception, right? Right. But no, no. <laughs> it didn't happen. Right. So it's interesting that we had CU that passed a ban, everybody else that passed a ban, and Fort Collins, which didn't, and nothing happened there. All right. Who was your client in this case? This I find fascinating. So we represent a group called Students for Concealed Carry on campus, and, and three of their members as well. Uh, but Students for Concealed Carry is a grassroots organization that uh, it's run by students. It was founded after the Virginia Tech tragedy. It was actually founded at Virginia Tech, wasn't it? Um, yeah, and, and it, it was sort of, it was a grassroots group that grew up organically. A lot of uh, Facebook connections and social media connections made it happen. And um, These were students, many of whom lived through the tragedy at Virginia Tech and realized they don't, they want some protection. They want to be able to, to defend themselves and they started pushing for this. They reached out to Mountain States Legal. You guys took on the, the case here. And when did you file? We filed in December of 2008. And the university almost immediately uh, asked to have the case dismissed, saying, look at the attorney general's opinion. He's already said we're OK. Um, go away. <laughs> go away. And, uh, and the trial court actually agreed. We, we got dismissed. Uh, we lost. And uh, we appealed to the Court of Appeals. And again, unanimously, they said, you win. The district court was wrong. The, the, the university is covered by the Concealed Carry Act. They can't ban guns on campus for licensed individuals. Um, and so we, at that point, had a victory. And, and actually, CSU had been toying with implementing a ban after we right. lost at the trial court. They abandoned that. Uh, and most of the community colleges in the state also got rid of their bans uh, when we won at the Court of Appeals. But it was a short-lived victory because then the regents voted to appeal to the Colorado Supreme Court. During that appeal process, did the ban stay in place or did, uh, the, did you get a stay of execution? Well, CU got a stay right. of execution. So uh, the, the ban has been in place um, and it, it was only just recently that it was done now, away with. I don't know if you know this because you're just a kid and obviously don't have much life experience yourself. And if when you get your driver's license and you get more experience, you'll, you'll find out that Colorado's court system is wildly pulls to the left, particularly our state Supreme Court, which hasn't taken any uh, opportunity to bat down the Taxpayer Bill of Rights every time they could, selectively pull things off the ballot. And other than two out of the seven justices, everyone has been appointed by a Democrat, either Roy Romer, Bill Ritter, or Mayor Hickenlooper, Governor Hickenlooper. But you were able to get a unanimous decision. What, is, what does that tell you? Well, I had heard from more experienced people that the court swings to the left. I mean, when your mom drove you down to, to hear this case in the front of the Supreme Court, did you ever expect that? <laughs> I didn't, no. And she told me when I got <laughs> out of the car, you know, you're going to lose. But, yeah, well, yeah, no, we, 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 we were... We were a little bit uh, disappointed that, that the court granted cert. We didn't think that, that they would side with us because they, they have a track right. record of, of not siding uh, with, you know, or, or of swinging to the left, as you say. Uh, but um, the decision was unanimous. So they saw the writing on the wall, I guess. The, the legislature was so clear in 2003. As of this date, so what's the law? If I'm taking uh, classes on CU Boulder's campus, can I now carry today? Well, th that's a more complicated question than I wish it was because the, all the, the Supreme Court said was the Concealed Carry Act applies to the university. Because we got dismissed before we had any chance to offer any evidence uh, into the record, 
the, the policy technically is still around. Uh, it's still on the books. Um, if, if I was a student at CU, I would be cautious about carrying. CU has come out and said in a number of public statements that they understand that, that their, their ban is unlawful and that they're not going to enforce it. Uh, but, but still, it's on the books at CU, so now it's going to take another legal action to force CU to remove that from, from the rules. Would I be right? Well, what we'll do is the, the ruling becomes law a, after two weeks. That, that's the university's right. opportunity to ask the court to reconsider. So after two weeks, um, we'll go back to the district court and ask the district court to issue an injunction uh, prohibiting CU from, from enforcing the, the ban. Put your crystal ball on here. Um, first of all, I think there's going to be pressure at the state level to change it. I think there's going to be folks who want to go, well, let's go back and have that same argument we had a decade ago and, and carve out another exception. Do you think that goes anywhere? Well, you know, I, I'm not a lobbyist, so I'll leave that to the lobbyists, but it, it it seems to me that the the House rejected these same arguments ten years ago. They we've had ten years of, of experience with concealed carry on campus that tells us that it's safe, that it doesn't interfere with the learning environment. So it seems to me like those arguments would have even less weight today. But you can understand though why there's an emotional reaction to to this that we we don't want our eight-year-old kids going to grade school packing heat and the idea of guns on campuses because we remember college campuses. We remember the parties, we remember the booze, we remember the whole thing. People are smoking dope. It's, it's a party scene. We remember that and the last thing we want to do is introduce a firearm into that, into that situation. So I get the emotional, you, you, you can't do that. What's the response? Well, the response is, is pretty simple. This is not a question about who can carry. It's a question about where you can carry. So we're talking about the same licensed adults that carry in movie theaters and banks and grocery stores every day all over Colorado. They don't become crazed killers the second they step onto CU's campus. These are the same folks that are carrying on the other side of, of the street. When they step onto CU's campus, they're still the same people. They're still the same so responsible individuals. So in other words, you're up, you're up at CU and you're across the street from the campus and you see a wild party going on. Well, they're legal to carry there. And up until last week, they couldn't carry on campus. Now they could either go one place or the other, and it makes it. Do you think it's going to make, we we've, we've only have a few seconds left. Will this make campuses safer? Will, will, the, will the lessons of Virginia Tech take hold here? Well, and then this actually reminds me of the legislative debate in 2003. The, the campus itself might be safer, it might not be. But that person who's attacked, by a rapist or a robber, that person will be safer, and I think that's what matters. Jim, congratulations. What, a, what an amazing victory for you and, and for Mountain States. It's just really exciting. So congratulations. Keep up the good work. You, listen for me on KHOW. That's KHOW, 630, Sundays at 5 p.m. Check out the Independence Institute, independenceinstitute.org, and we'll see you next week.